Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Premier League review for the past two uh, weekends. Before we get started, like I used to do now previously, a little bit of housekeeping. First off, I really hope that you enjoyed the shorts that I've started posting this weekend, uh, where I just get my immediate after the game thoughts off the chest, which may open the videos a little bit more for, um, you know, my review videos a little bit more to talk about Jan Jan Trace and not be so focused on match re reviews. I want to see how it, how it goes. I definitely had fun doing it. However, having said that, I recorded one this morning for uh, the United win over Liverpool that we will talk about. Uh, a little, a little bit more today as well but the sound quality was so bad that i had to take it down and i didn't release it until it was uh, too late for that to re-release one so yeah so be it you live and you learn i'm um, our last thing also that yeah i'm a little bit late today uh, uh due to work okay what what can we say about this round i mean i was really again um when you want to summarize two weeks it usually allows you to go more for a trend over two weeks than just pick out a certain game. And there were a few things that were coming in, in, in into mind. I mean, one obvious one, because I usually go for the uh, for, uh, for, for the positive. This is Arsenal are, are on top, and given that they are now in all or nothing, uh, it's quite the opposite to what happened last year, where they had three losses, now they had three, three wins. Um, is there really a difference? Uh, how how much of a difference is it though? Is it as deceiving as last year? Uh, we gotta talk about that. So this was a uh, first thought that I had. And of course, if I would have made it last uh, week, um, it was all about United's loss at Brentford and how bad is United. Da, 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 da. Well, this week it looks already a little bit better. Maybe just maybe this was the loss that was needed for United to actually move forward in a proper direction. So uh, that is another observation that I could make over those two weekends. I fell into the trap a little bit myself, but I was actually thinking that a, I think the loss at Brentford for United was probably a little bit more down to the tactics by Thomas Frank for Brentford. This was more on Brentford than on United. Um, similarly, like yesterday's loss, I'm not, uh, yesterday's win over Liverpool, I am still not quite uh, sure. Yes, United played brilliant, but how much is it down to uh, the problems that Liverpool are having? Another obvious headline would have been a uh, crisis or not. I'm exactly, United would fall into that, but is Liverpool now in crisis? I would say it's way too early for that one. Is, man, is West Ham way out there in crisis? I also am not quite sure yet. Because it's just so early in the, in the season. We saw last season, everyone was saying that Arsenal are going to relegate it. They barely missed, they just missed out by a little bit to a Champions League spot. So uh, it is, uh, the overreaction that is happening so early in, in the season uh, is usually something that I want to hold back. And I think I heard, yes, yes, a very good thing. Do not look at the table. Do absolutely not look at the table. We'll look at the table, <laughs> but do absolutely not look at the table uh, in the first six rounds. And that's why I have my expected standings or my projections because they give us a little bit more of an idea of what is happening and what is not happening yes some starts to the season were really really bad some starts like Leeds United or the guys that I'm wearing Crystal Palace have been really 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 good I would even argue, argue that Arsenal had a really good start but it's just a small sample of a large season it's always always have that in mind a season is a marathon and not a sprint. Who is out ahead of the season, is uh, it does it doesn't matter. And we would have to come up with a system, and that's what I'm trying to do with my expected standings that you will see at the very end of this video, um, to kind of have it a little bit like uh, the tennis uh, ranking, where yes, you can have a bad tournament, but that, uh, that it's kind of steady over a year, or that, that, that you have a little bit of a projection in there instead of looking at the actual table with games played, because after two rounds, there are so many changes. After three rounds, it flip-flops like crazy. This is just, some of it, or most of it is just random noise. And a team, and that's, I think Arsenal is the, really the best example for that. Because last season, and if you look at their schedule, it was after they lost the first, first game, it was totally expected that they lose the first three. They turned it around. Now it's the other way around and we gotta, gotta see they have not really played a big team yet. 
The last thing though uh, is I chose the title uh, Early Season Classics and this to me is what I came up with then. Uh, we had already at least two games that were really, really, really good and absolute classics. The one, of course, is the London Derby between Chelsea and Spurs, which gave us a coach fight that both coaches enjoyed. And actually, I think it was not so bad. It was uh, it was also a brilliant performance by Chelsea, only to be undone a week later. And then, of course, the clash between Man City and Newcastle, which I dubbed in my short video, is this a coming of age for Newcastle? It may be. It might be a sign uh, that they are at least a force that can challenge for Europe maybe a little bit more. They can hang now with the big boys. It really seems this way. This is a really good team that had City on the ropes for sure. And then we might actually say if wasn't there a third season classic in there between Liverpool uh, at Manchester United. Uh, one last one because I'm wearing Crystal Palace. I think... Everyone is underestimating Crystal Palace at the moment. Uh, they had an unlucky loss to start the season. Then they got a point at Liverpool uh, with yeah, Italian tactics, but uh, so be it. You got you got to do it. And now they, they, this weekend they got the first win. And I think they are a really, really well coached team. And I think also some other uh, smaller uh, London teams like Fulham and Brentford, I'm fully on board with them as well. They uh, and they played out a brilliant game uh, this past week, we, we, we weekend as well, and add to that Brighton and Leeds, and we have some really really positive stories from uh, teams that you would not expect it. From. I think we probably have to go now a uh, big one into Manchester United because I think this is almost the biggest story there. Um, that a week ago, the first two rounds really United looked dreadful, but I think it was kind of uh, helpful that this actually happened because it allowed Ten Hag now to tinker a little bit against Liverpool and leave a Maguire and leave a Ronaldo out of the starting lineup. Yes, and Casemiro is coming come in, although I'm also not quite sure what I should think about that uh, higher because while I think at this moment Casemiro is great over giving him a five-year contract, I'm not sure this is so smart and you're spending a lot of money. It seems a little bit dead, that desperation. It is one side that I don't think there's a lot of planning going on at United. However, for this season, having these losses, I think Ten Hag really took the right um, lessons out of that. You cannot rely on Ronaldo. You cannot rely on, Ma on, on, on Maguire. And while the first two rounds were probably the worst possible opponents because both Brighton and Brentford are two small teams that have a clear plan that can take huge advantage of your weaknesses if you let them and United let them. Um, Liverpool also has a plan usually. But uh, given their uh, list of injuries and problems up front, might have been the right opponent this time, Tamara. I don't want to lessen the win because it is a big win for United, especially since the uh, pre-game uh, nar narrative was all about how big United going to lose this time around. However, I think it is rather remarkable that um, Liverpool show signs of early season problems. Not enough that I'm not worried of Liverpool not finishing the top four. I'm not worried about that as well, but I think they're already a little bit knocked out of, out of the titlers. They may have their blip early in the season, get it out of the way and win later, but yeah. Uh, I say we look at some results. Uh, we have here uh, uh, the weekend before we had uh, Jera against Lampard, the probably least uh, glamorous version with uh, uh, Jared getting a 2-1 win uh, over Everton. Uh, Arsenal, as I said, looking really good with Gabi Jesus being a really uh, part of the team or, or, or already, uh, getting the first two, 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 two goals. Then, um, you know, Leicester always hung around, but Leicester it might be a team that is really, really in trouble. In the end, Arsenal just too good for to win over uh, the Foxes. Um, what other uh, re results do, do, do we have? I mean, um, City against Bournemouth was a 4 0 win. Oh, horrible jersey matchup, as far as I remember. Uh, Southampton come back uh, from a two goal deficit against Leeds, where we saw a er, 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 sign that Leeds might be something to look at. Uh, the less said about Wolves Fulham, the better. 
Brentford against Man United, I, I, we already talked talk about it. I it, it was just utter dis- 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 destruction the first time. I mean, uh, this is a team that just folded. But I honestly think that it was really Thomas Frank who did his homework here, who saw the weaknesses. I mean, uh, United wanted to play a certain way, given the personnel that they have. And yes, it was maybe foolish of Ten Hag to think that he can play out from her back because the first two goals look really, really bad. The first one, the here has a shocker on the, on the scene. The second one, there's so much pressure, so much pressure on Eriksen uh, that, you know, the ball is played out, but um, no one gives him a passing lane and you were not allowed to boot the ball forward. And then it was just uh, utter destruction from um, there on. So, yeah. Take it as, as is. Nottingham Forest actually got off with a win. Um as well which is remarkable but i think the game of the round was definitely chelsea against spurs uh a game that chelsea should have won left and right uh they completely dominated spurs a spurs team that everyone was so high on going into it can they get rid of the jinx of spurs no uh they couldn't really but maybe they did uh it was also a match marked by maddening refereeing i mean First, first of all, Chelsea took the deservedly through Koulibaly, Cucurella uh, assisting on the corner there. What a brilliant shot that was from a central defender. Uh, and they had the game largely under, under control. Then well, there was a foul on Harvard that was, was, was given a little bit, uh, just a few seconds later, there was of course a new phase of play. Pierre Heuberg puts it into the net. And it counted, although Richarlison, for me, stood offside, really blocking the goalkeeper. This is a goal that should not have stood. I, in a way, I wanted the goal to go in to add a little bit more spice to the game. And it was literally at this moment that I switched onto the game because I was watching Las Capit until I thought, yeah, this will make it interesting. But the goal should not have stood. I almost immediately uh, said this uh, <laughs> to, 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 to my wife. And then, of course... Conte celebrating and Tuchel getting fully into his face because he didn't like what Conte was doing. And actually, actually, I enjoyed that a little bit, you know, get a little bit spice in there. However, Chelsea's response was really, really good and Harvard should have made a goal. Reese James then gets the goal after a, a horrible build-up er- error by uh, Spurs. Reese James, after Sterling assist, uh, makes it 2-1. And then I really thought that Chelsea is going to score a third. Only in stoppage time did uh, Spurs come alive again. Uh, had a few chances. Uh, definitely um, Romero should have been sent off for pulling the hair of Cucurella in the build-up to the corner. That perishes, then takes, and Kane heads in. And we have a famous 2-2. And then after the game, the famous, the most famous of handshakes uh, with both goals and walking to it to each other. And Tuchel said, no, I did not like that. I am so upset. I wanted to be upset. Please look me in the eye. And they went at each other and got both sent off. And at the moment, Tuchel is actually uh, banned for one game where Conte doesn't get anything. I actually think none of them should get banned because it's actually fine what they did. They did not insult each other, they had just an argument and I really actually I enjoyed it and they did enjoy it afterwards and that was the fun part about that. Um, I'm not sure if we had an argument between Colcourt with Liverpool against Crystal Palace but this this was a game I said okay uh, that might be after Liverpool's not so good performance let's watch Liverpool a little bit Um, and I really thought at first they're gonna eat Crystal Palace alive except that they didn't. They didn't score the goal. Crystal Palace had a really clear tactical plan. We're going to stand uh, defensively and we're going to put the balls behind the lines of Liverpool and we hit them there. And once uh, Eze plays it on to Saha, 30 second minute, it's 1 0 for Crystal Palace. Against the run of play, don't get me wrong, but not undeserved. I felt that the longer the game went on, that Liverpool got more and more frustrated. They really need, needed to get a spark. The spark that they got actually uh, might be to the detriment, though a little bit later on, because David Nunez uh, got really um, more or less heckled by and, and, and Anderson. And already in the build-up, he wanted to kind of hit him on the uh, back of his head, but it he, 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 he didn't get in. Anderson talked about him in turn, turned around and basically did a little bit of a sedan against him. Uh, not really. I mean, the comparison is ridiculous, but he got sent off for that with, uh, with a red. <sighs> Yeah, the kid has to learn. 
But that was actually the spark that Liverpool needed because then they said, now we really got to dig our heels in and Luis Diaz, a brilliant goal. And I actually thought that they might win it out of that. That, you know, was not a perfect start for Liverpool, but in the end, the game was going. Uh, maybe the 1 1 is the best they could uh, get out of this. Um, Spurs unremarkable win over, over Wolves. Also, Wolves had actually a little bit better chances of the game. As I said, Crystal Palace in a 3 1 over Aston Villas. Everton, uh, Nottingham, not much happening there. And still, it's a 1 1 game uh, with Everton equalizing very, very late. Fulham Brentford was the game of the afternoon. Um, uh, there, uh, a proper West London Derby. Uh, or in the first minute, a really weird goal by Reed and Palinia at, at second one. However, Brentford come back, Nurka just before the half, then a goal disallowed by Ivan Tony, but he gets his equal at 71st. But uh, just in the ninth minute, Mitrovic gets the winner. Gotta say, I really like the Fulham jersey uh, this time around. I think Fulham uh, might actually be a team that has, the, of the, all the promoted sides, Fulham to me seems, seems to be the one that's best positioned to stay in the league. But, you know, again, early, early results there. Um, I found the win of Southampton against Leicester also remarkable because Southampton looked like, uh, I mean, they showed some signs of life already against Leeds. Um, and but it, it seemed to be a team that might get be in relegation trouble, but you know, uh, those were good results for sure. Um, Arsenal silky smooth, at least in the first 50 minutes, with both Odega uh, goals scored by Odegaard. Uh, that was really, really impressive. However, again, Brentford might, I uh, know, not not Brentford, uh, Bournemouth might not be the opposition that will really test this Arsenal team. Could have been even more because a goal by uh, Gabriel Jesus was disallowed. And yeah, William Saliba from France, a defender, scores a beautiful uh, third, third goal. What about the with, with defenders scoring uh, 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 screamers uh, in the Premier League? A shocker was Chelsea's performance because you really thought that Chelsea uh, have turned a corner with their performance against Spurs. And then uh, Leeds did to them what basically Brentford did to, did, did, did to United. High intensity style and Brenton Aronson uh, pressing goalkeeper um, Mondi, Mandy uh, just takes it off him <laughs> and, pull, and, and puts it in. And shortly ever rolled to Rodrigo make, makes it 2-0. At a point where Chelsea probably had a little bit more chances, but the intensity, it was a high intensity game going up and down. Uh, got to Chelsea a whole lot. Uh, Harrison makes it 3-0. It was maybe a little bit too much. I think what will hurt uh, Chelsea even a bit more is that Koulibaly got sent off because now they're short on central defenders. Um, again, Chelsea is almost also in the cat category uh, panic buying like United. So let's see what they come up with. I uh, hear they wanted Leao for Milan for 150 million. Blah. Not sure if I like that. West Ham, um, yeah, not sure about West Ham yet. I mean, losing to Brighton doesn't sound as bad anymore because Brighton actually did really, really well. But you losing three games in a row is not a way to start the season. But, you know, you might just miss out on the Champions League. Arsenal, um, game of the season probably so far between Yukus, Kalkas, Nared and City. Because after Gündogan gives City the lead, you really thought that City is going to eat uh, Newcastle alive. But... Uh, they took a little while, shook themselves off, and then really got into the game and put City on the ropes. Almiron getting the equalizer. I thought if he was scored with the belly, I th and uh, it was. You thought at first it will not count, but but, but it can't. Callum Wilson uh, just before the half makes it 2 1 for Newcastle, and Trippier scores a free kick to make 3 1 the 54th. You really thought that New Newcastle is coming away with a famous win. However, this is Manchester City, and they just turn it on for a few minutes. And within 10 minutes of the 3 2 3 goal, they had equalized Erling Holland getting a goal, although he was not really much in play. But I think this will be Holland's role for now in City. And then Bernardo Silva, after one of those passes by the Borane, where you just, wow, how did he see that one? Um, a big talking point, of course, is uh, Trippier's foul on Kevin De Bruyne, which was maybe a little bit high, but um, I actually found it okay that he was not saying it there. Although this was definitely, you know, if there was a third color of a card, like an orange card, this would be the prime example for it. But I, while I was thinking maybe if there should be like a 10 minute penalty or something like that uh, in football, like they, it is in Austrian youth level, which is a blue card. 
On the other side, I think I don't want to complicate the game even more because ref referees already have too much to think about. And then yesterday, uh, United against Liverpool. I think in the first 20 minutes, United were absolutely brilliant. Uh, taking advantage of Liverpool's frail forces, uh, Becker, uh, creating chance at longer head. He'd already post early and the way he assisted Sancho and especially what Sancho did. This was United's first goal of the season. And what a brilliant goal it was. The way he cuts the ball, uh, gets rid of Hand Henderson and um, Alisson in, in a goal and then uh, just can tap, tap it in. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, Liverpool, though, got themselves a little bit back in the game um, and were probably towards the end of them a little bit the more danger interesting, although the real only danger was uh, Bruno Fernandes. Uh, clearance shot onto his own own goal it was cleared off of the line and you could already see at this point this is a game where a lot of things are going right for United and they're not going right for Liverpool and this might actually help uh, Liverpool to just chalk this up this was one it was not man man meant to be and when the Rashford goal stood after a pass by Martial for a, I literally thought at first it is offside Two to be honest, after the rash for goal, I then nodded off uh, because I was just too too tired. But uh, that rep because for me this was was the decider. Salah pulls from back. I saw that one, but yeah, I think it was a brilliant. It, it was a really good performance by United. I'm still not sure how, how much is down to Liverpool's uh, own struggles at this moment, but maybe this is something that is now a little bit more calm. My thing for 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 United is they had those performances in the previous seasons as well here here and there. Can you back it up? Can you string it together? For Liverpool, I think you gotta be a little bit patient. It might be just like two seasons ago where uh, the beginning of the season not good and the end you string to to get a good run. I still think that Liverpool will be the team uh, that is closest to Manchester City. They just have to find that they have to get especially their problems in midfield sorted. So here are you can look. The standings after three rounds with Arsenal up top, City still very much the favorites, although they have already dropped points. And it was kind of throwing a bone to Liverpool. If you win against United, you might be back in two. No, you're not. United are now ahead of Liverpool, so to add insult to in in injury, but I think it's on the adjusted standings, uh, which don't say much except for average goals per game. The three right columns projected expected, especially the difference. The green bars already say Arsenal is performing much better than expected. Brighton and Leeds, those are the three teams that are really, really well. I need a Leeds jersey. I probably need a Brighton jersey as well in there. And then we see the teams that are still in, in trouble. I mean, Leicester, West Ham, definitely, and Liverpool, United. United has not turned a corner yet. They have performed much worse than you would expect because of the first opening day losses. However, as I said, it's usually much better to look at the uh, expected uh, standings. And here we see uh, the big surprise that Brighton is now in the top six. Not sure if this will hold up to scrutiny, but let's see. Uh, Brighton had a much, much better start than expected. And you already see, well, West Ham is only in 12th. Uh, it is not as dire as it looks like. Leicester just below them uh they might be mid-table fin finishes everton at the moment in the relegation zone uh that is some some something i find uh significant nottingham forest and bournemouth down city will be become champions and in the top four we have now the two london uh, the two north london clubs with chelsea dropping out there which also seems about right now as for upcoming coming games i need to look at three rounds because we have a midweek round i don't know how my scheduling will work out uh on the next weekend i don't think we have a really really huge clash there um if i look at it man arsenal fulham is something that could be a fun game um nottingham forest against Spurs, maybe, maybe it will be right. And of course, Aston Villa against West Ham because of the colors. Uh, Chelsea against Leicester, maybe have your eye on that, that one as well. And Brighton against Leeds United might be this, the sleeper game of the season so far. Then uh, in the midweek, um, I would say it's either West Ham Tottenham or uh, Liverpool Newcastle. Uh, that really stick out to me. The rest is, yeah, I mean, Leicester against United would have been, not really. And then on that weekend coming, and uh, there's one big one, and that is, of course, Manchester United against, against Arsenal. However, we also have a Liverpool derby to start it all off. So uh, that's interesting as well. So this is what's coming in the next three rounds. All times that I've given you uh, maybe uh, may change, have that in mind. 
any case that's it from me it's a long video but i had a lot to say uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day